Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Today, we have a very talented chef back on the show by popular demand, and she is turning the table. She's going to make recipes from my latest cookbook, Unprocessed, which coincidentally is on sale today. There's a link below in the chat and the show notes. If you buy the book today, in the future, or even if you bought it last year, if you email your receipt or a screenshot of your receipt, if you don't have the original, and if you bought it on Amazon, you can always find it in your order history, to Chef AJ Bonus at yahoo.com, we will send you a PDF of a bunch of delicious recipes that didn't make it in this book, including my famous strawberry chocolate cheesecake, along with an almost two-hour video, instructional video of those recipes. So this is your chance to get it. She's also going to be making one of her own recipes that sounds amazing, mini vegan berry cheesecakes. Please welcome back Linda Tyler. Hi, Linda. How are you? Hi, Chef AJ. It's great to see you. Yeah, I am so excited for you because I hear you've got a book coming out. I can't wait. What's it called? When does it come out? How can we find out when to get it? Yeah, so it's called the Plant-Based Anti-Inflammatory Cookbook. And it's coming out in February 2024. And I don't know when it will be available for pre-order, but I'm working now on bonus content for those who pre-order it. If you want to, if people want to get an alert, they can go to my website, graciousvegan.com. Just scroll down a little bit on the homepage and there's a place to fill out a form to get an alert about when it will be available for pre-order. You know, I... Um, I've been a volunteer for Dr. Greger's nutritionfacts.org website for seven, going on eight years. And I just kept reading about infl inflammation and the relationship to chronic diseases, that, which is, uh, you know, the tendency for us to get more inflammation, whether we like it or not, as we get older because of hormonal changes and cell damage, et cetera. And I learned from him that there are certain foods that are better than others at fighting inflammation. And so I call them the anti-inflammatory anti superstars. And I have a list of those and I describe why each of them is a superstar. And then every recipe in the book has one, usually several superstars in it. So it's for people who are new to plant-based cooking or not new to plant-based cooking, but really want to ratchet up a little bit on the anti-inflammatory superstars. And so I, you know, have some introductory chapters on inflammation and then 80 res recipes, each with a color photo that I have taken. So oh, I super. love that. I love when there's a photo with every recipe and yeah. uh, I can't wait till it comes out and we'll have to get you on the show to announce it when it does, I hope. Okay. And I know you're going to have all healthy, delicious whole foods as the anti-inflammatory, but in your research, have you dis discovered like maybe what the top three foods are that actually cause inflammation? I'm going to guess they're kind of like animal products and processed food, but. Yeah, the three is nutrients are saturated fat, um, which is in a lot of animal products, but also in, you know, some vegan processed foods. And then there is, um, why am I blanking? Um, uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm forgetting the other two, but um, animal products, high saturated fats, and um, oh, refined grains, of course, they cause they cause sugar spikes, which then cause oxidation. Um, so refined grains and sugars are not good either. And so, um, I will remember the third one, I'm sure in about a half hour and then I'll okay. when you <laughs> right in the middle of your cheese, exactly. cake, you'll remember and you'll let us know. Absolutely. So yeah. what are you going to make first today? Yeah. So I'm going to make three desserts. I don't need the stove or the oven today, which is nice in the summer. And I'm going to, um, emphasize today sort of how to store these frozen desserts in portions. And I'll show some options for that because it's great for storing and also for eating. So you can eat just a little bit, have that nice frozen sweet 
uh, when you don't need a, a large dessert, just a little something. So that's what I'm going to emphasize. So the first thing I'm going to make is your chocolate peanut butter and ice cream. Oh, nice. I'm yes. curious. Do you, do you have the Ninja Creamy like so many of it? Us? I don't. I do not have the Ninja Creamy. So you can sort of point out differences. I'm, I have gone back and forth on blender and food processor. And for me, my food processor does the best job. Um, and you can tell me like what the differences are with the Ninja Creamy, but I don't have a huge kitchen and I just, you know, can't squeeze another appliance in here. Um, but I'm, I'm anxious to, I'm, I'm eager to hear, uh, I'm eager to hear about it. Right. Hey, you know, I don't know if you know, if you watch often enough to know, we play this game with the people that are watching live. We call them the Zoom unity. They're the people that are watching on YouTube. So we have this active yeah. chat. And the game we play is who does the guest look like? Now, I am I know who I think you look like. And tell me if you've ever been told this. The chat agrees. Sigourney Weaver. Yes. Okay. Thank you, you chat. Do. Yeah. You, I mean, you look like, like you could be your younger sister. Yeah. Very, <laughs> not a bad person to look for. No, look like unless I'll take it. it. Unless an alien is coming out of a, a stomach or something. Otherwise, right. <laughs> that's fantastic. You Thank know? you. Yep. So it, I not, it's not just me. You've been told this. Good. Okay. No, I, yeah, I take that as a huge compliment. Appreciate nice. it. And there's a question. What, what is the food processor type that you're using? I use my 36 year old Cuisinart. 36 I, years old. That's amazing. That it I lasts. bought it in graduate school when it, that was a huge amount of money. Um, and it is solid as a rock. I have had to replace all the plastic parts but uh, you know it's built like a tank the, the engine and so it's the motor is great I'm, they had to replace the blades at some part because at some point because the metal was falling off so I just keep going I like to tell people I bought it during the Reagan administration that's hilarious I yeah. didn't think it even last that long yeah they're great it's great and I assume they're still great but I'm very happy with it so you know I don't know if newer ones, work even better for an ice cream but this one you know I tell people if they're having trouble I say you just gotta want it you know you just gotta stop wipe it down usually I have to wipe it down I have to add a little bit of dairy non-dairy milk which maybe you don't have to do with the creamy but just a little bit like a quarter cup and then I just have to wipe it down a couple times to break a couple times to break up the frozen bananas and do you Perfect. cut your bananas before you do that? Because then they, they process easier. I do. I, I just have, you know, I get bananas each time I go to the store when they're ripe. I slice them, cut them in half, slice them and put them in flat in each one in a baggie. So I have baggies, flat baggies of banana slices. So that works well. People need to know that if they freeze their bananas without peeling. They'll be sad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Right, exactly. So almost impossible to get that peel off once it's yeah. Done. Peel them, cut them, put them in the baggie or wherever you want. Yep. Okay. Should I go ahead? Yep. Get started. Okay. So first, let's put in the two tablespoons of peanut butter and uh, a little bit of nut butter. Nut butter really does make a huge difference with a with an ice cream. So we have our nut butter, uh, two tablespoons of cocoa powder. And two cups of frozen bananas, which I've already put in my two cup measure here. So there's I usually cut them, you know, vertically in half once and then so they're kind of half slices, which I find helps. And then you've gotten me started on vanilla powder. I know, isn't it great? I mean, I don't yeah. just, I don't get a penny if you buy vanilla powder, but you get the benefit of having the best tasting dessert. Yeah, and it it has kind of a a woody taste which I really like. It's not not it, it, it does taste sort of more natural. All right, and I'm gonna put in a splash of milk just to get everything going in my food processor. 
And I may, you know, when you make when you make this type of ice cream, ice cream in the blender, I find it takes even more milk, but that's partly why I like it in the food processor. Okay, my food processor is back here, so I'm going to go blend this. Okay, while she's blending, I'll talk to everybody and say thanks for all the good wishes. That was something if you missed yesterday's show. First time in 1,607 episodes that I got sick on the show. I took on my own show, but anyway, we're fine now. And Linda is making her own recipe for a vegan berry cheesecake, but she's doing two from my latest book on processed. By the way, you like my new manicure? Look at that, which is on sale now on Amazon. And if you send your receipt or a screenshot of your receipt to Chef AJ Bonus at yahoo.com, we will send you a PDF of a bunch of delicious dessert recipes that didn't make it in this book and an almost two hour recording of a class that I taught, a paid class, which for you will be free if you buy it. If you bought the book in the past, no problem. Just send that receipt or screenshot. If you bought it on Amazon, there's always an order history you can access. I'm curious to know in the chat what your favorite machine is for making nice cream. Mine is, of course, the Ninja Creamy, followed by the Champion Juicer. But I do think what Linda says about food processors being true, that you do need less, less liquid to get it to process, and that would make a thicker, creamier, and more scoopable ice cream. So if you're after more of a real kind of ice cream rather than a soft serve, you might want to give some of those machines a try. Hopefully she'll come back soon. Yeah. Any questions? If you're not watching on YouTube, if you watch on Twitter or Facebook, we still appreciate you, but it's more fun to watch on YouTube because we have this little chat thing going on and everybody knows each other. They take role and that's where you get to ask the questions because I can't see them on the other sites. She's back. Hello. Okay. There we go. Lovely, lovely, nice cream. Again, it's, I know it's, Gorgeous here. And so what I want to do to show you how I like to have this, how I like to eat this, I'm going to switch to my overhead camera, is first I like sometimes to add add-ins, which really kind of makes the difference between great and greatest dessert. So I like these ice cream. I did remember the other third bad nutrient for inflammation, which is endotox. You get from bacteria, which especially live in meat. Uh, so endotoxins are also really bad for inflammation. I knew I'd remember at an awkward moment. So I'm going to fill these almost up. And I think it makes four, maybe three. You could obviously make your servings larger or smaller, but you know, at this size, this is not a ton of calories. I'll make this small one. Okay, and then I'm gonna do some add-ins and I'll talk to you about my favorite add-ins. So first, since it's, since it's, since it's maybe a few peanuts in one of them. Ready. So we'll do that. You could leave them on the top or I'm gonna mix them in. So that's one of my desserts this week. And then I like uh, cocoa nibs. Eating cocoa nibs, which is the best kind. You don't really need the added sugar. They, they have a wonderful texture. They're kind of crisp, but kind of chewy at the dense at the same time. So you don't need a ton of them. And then for the third one, probably the most surprising is currants. So you could do raisins, but I really like the taste of currants. Sometimes for an afternoon thing, I just have a few cocoa nibs and a few currants together, just a little mm. thimble full of those, and they taste really good. Good, good. Kind of like your own trail mix. Exactly, but it's just the cocoa nibs and the currants, and you don't need don't need very much. So there are my three. And this I could eat just you know for the cook, you know, but. 
Um, I love that. And then you can just pull one out whenever you need it. Exactly. Then you just pull one out. And if you need to microwave it for a few seconds, 15 seconds, you can, or just let it sit out and be beautiful chocolate peanut butter ice cream desserts. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to put those in my fridge. So obviously you can do that with any nice cream, but I think that you know, I'm all about how can you get, how can you have a really satisfying small portion of a dessert that's immediately at hand so you're not desperate and grabbing something else. So anything you want to say about this recipe, what inspired you or? Well, you know what? I, I created it when I got the Nutra milk, but then because the Nutra milk is more like a food processor than a blender. Yeah. And so I was trying to show that if you wanted to, you could make ice creams in it. And I don't think I needed to add any wa um, any liquid to that. But what people have asked me, and maybe you know this, because I, have no, I personally don't eat peanuts. So I'm wondering, people that always want to use that PB2 powder, have you had any success? Success with that? I have not tried that. No, I haven't tried PB. PB2. Yeah. No. Um, that would be a good experiment. I will try that sometime. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Should we go on to the guilt free frappuccino? Yes, because I recently posted, I think two nights ago, a picture of the ice cream that I made in the Ninja Creamy. And it, I don't know what it is about the same ET, but it tastes like chocolate, even though it's a coffee substitute. It's the weirdest thing. Yeah, it's so good. And I made this, uh, I have um, chicory root powder and the Simi. Uh, it, what is it made out of rice, rice powder that tastes like coffee. Both of them so good, such good substitutes. I don't know which ones I like best, but yeah. And then I had just some simi with hot water and it was indeed like coffee. It was kind of nice. So yeah, I'd love to hear more as we go about how you develop this recipe. It's, it's really a great recipe. Well, you know, I can tell you what happened is we used to live in the desert and there's a thing called date shakes. There's a very famous place. There's a lot of famous date places like Shields State Farm and Hadley's is like a stop right. people on the way back from Palm Springs. And they always made date shakes. But the thing is, they didn't have any vegan ones. And the thing is, I thought that was so weird because even if somebody's not vegan, there's so many people allergic to dairy. Why not have a non-dairy option? They do right. have non-dairy options now. Yeah. So my husband had always wanted to try a date shake, which by the way, are delicious because I mean, they're made from dates. And there was a place near Trader Joe's that sold date shakes and they were delicious, but they were like $12 and Whoa. he was like going every day. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. And so I went in there and of course they couldn't tell me the exact ratio, but I said, you know, I just said, I have allergies. Can you tell me the ingredients? And they basically said, you know, non-dairy milk, dates, you know, cinnamon, nutmeg, vanilla. And so I re-engineered it at home. Yeah. So the idea how it became Frappuccino, I'm trying to remember how, why I decided to add, oh, I, I think, um, so I, I tried the Samey or the Simi, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Uh, powder. And since I'm not a coffee drinker, I tried it and I'm like, well, this tastes just like coffee, but not really a coffee drinker. Right. Thinking, well, what else can I do with it? And so I just thought, well, when I used to live in LA, there was a restaurant it's still there, Follow Your Heart, the oldest vegetarian restaurant there. And they used to make these like mocha shakes. And I'm like, well, let me just put it in here. And you know what? We liked it better than just uh -huh. the day shakes. And now when I go to Rancho La Puerta to teach cooking, that's one of the recipes we make. And the people just love it because yeah. I mean, there's no sugar, there's no caffeine. And it's rich and creamy and it's not sickly yeah. sweet, you know? Yeah. It's, it, it checks all the boxes. It's really good. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And it's one of your new recipes for your 10th edition. So I thought that would be fun to show people who haven't seen some of your new recipes. So again, basically two large uh, frozen bananas. And I found out that a large banana is about one cup of banana slices. So one cup e equals one large banana for me anyway. Nice. And then a cup of non-dairy milk of your choice. What do you like to use, Linda? 
I use soy milk. In fact, I got a soy milk maker because I just was having a hard time paying almost $3.50 for a quart of soy milk. So I got a soy milk maker and I taught myself through trial and error how to eat, most easily strain it. So now I'm like a machine. I get it. I soak the soybeans, I make it, I strain it, and then I put it in these bottles and it works really well. I'm really glad I did that. All right, so put in the milk. Now we will put in the dates that you talked about. And are you using Medjool? Yep, I use Medjool dates. I always like to cut them into a couple pieces, two or three or four pieces. I have, I still once in a while find a pit that hasn't been taken out. So it helps blend them more quickly and you can check to make sure they got the pits out. Quarter cup of rolled oats. And then we'll use the samey uh, substitute a one and a half tablespoons. I found a one and a half tablespoon spoon on Amazon, my favorite measuring spoon. Okay. And then a teaspoon of chia. This is a half teaspoon. So here's our teaspoon of chia seeds, a teaspoon of vanilla powder. Make it over here. Yeah, that really, I think, is the secret of the vanilla powder. I learned about the chia seed and the oat thing from Kathy Hester, who yes. has a regular slot on the show when she made her strawberry shake without ice cream. There's something about oats and chia seeds that just thicken things to a nice... They do, sort of in different ways, yeah. You don't, you don't need a lot, you know, one teaspoon is all. That's right, that's right. And then some cinnamon... This is Vietnamese cinnamon this time for this time. And then eighth of a teaspoon nutmeg, which I, you know, I know the recipe calls for three medjool tates, but I'm going to be honest. I often put in four. Only yes, I did too. <laughs> when, when I'm putting the coffee substitute and Gina yeah. says, what is your secret to straining soy milk? It's so messy. Yes. Uh, do you want me to on that tangent like, briefly? Sure. People will need to know. Uh, basically, I, I, I use a nine by nine square pan. It sounds really weird. And I put my bag, you know, basically a nut bag. I know you suggested a paint straining bag, which is, which is cheaper, very similar. Yeah. So then I, I pour it into the, I make sure this is in the pan pour the milk in and then you can this then i make sure this is very closed you know i wrap this around and then you can just push in this pan push it and then get it in your hand and squeeze it twist it get as much out as you can and then you have it this pan this is a 9 by 9 it's full about 2 thirds then you can pour it. I still use a um, funnel as well to get it into these bottles with a skinny neck, but you can pour it out of the corner, which is convenient as well. Uh, that is the best I have found. I don't know, Chef AJ, if you have any other secrets too, but yeah. I have about I have about four bags, you know, because they each go into the laundry after they're done. You mean the actual laundry machine, like that you wash clothes in? Yeah, the the straining bag. I mean, I I dump out the okara, the the you know the the waste, the meat of the beans. That once you squeeze it all out, that okara, it's called, I think, it comes out. I put that in the compost, and then I wash the bag. Wait, wait, don't compost it because there's a recipe on this channel from JL Fields where she makes burgers out of Okara. Oh, okay. I've been looking for recipes. I want to, I want to um, do that because it is a shame because all that soy fiber and such that you can't, you can't use in the milk, but I will check it out. 
Okay. Um, all right, I think we're ready to blend. So here I go back to my counter. Okay, you got me now. Let's see if there's any questions that I can answer while she is blending. Zoom does make it so that we don't hear it, but we can't hear her. Jennifer washes her nut bag. Guys, the um, paint straining bag idea I got from a raw food chef in Huntington Beach, because I mean, when I first went to Rock Culinary School in 2003, those nut milk bags were like seven to nine dollars and they were small. And if you go to the hardware store or a paint store, you can get like a giant one to two gallon one for like 99 cents. And they're, then if you lose it or whatever, because I take them to Rancho La Puerta with me because we make homemade almond milk there. What they're also good for, you may not realize, is also like, for example, tomorrow I'm doing a cooking class for Dr. McDougall's program and I'm making my artichoke mm -hmm. spinach cheese dip. And when you take frozen spinach and defrost it, you know, it's cold when you squeeze it with your hands. I put it in the nut milk bag, which is a paint straining bag. And it's also good for squeezing. Look at these mosquito bites. I still have them matching ones. <laughs> it's like the mosquito perfectly knew where to bite. I got those at Rancho La Puerta, but otherwise it was a perfect week. And back to Linda. Hello. So here's our gorgeous dark frappuccino. Uh, I noticed the ones at uh, Starbucks are lighter, but it doesn't matter. They This tastes so good. You can taste all the flavors you talked about. So good. So this is a lot for a single serving. I can't, I can't drink all that much at a single serving. So the first time I made it, I divided it into, I think it made two plus one cup serving so that was good like the next day I opened my freezer it's like oh my gosh this is great. I have a frappuccino but then I saw your note on the recipe that said you could make popsicles out of it fudgesicles basically so I got my little silicone popsicle machine not not machine the mold and yesterday I made some of these and put them in my popsicle mold, I had to test that they could come out. But these um, these silicone ones are great. And I'm going to, they because they sort of push it out and they don't stick. You don't even have to warm them up. And there is a, I think I calculated it was between 30 and 40 calorie frappuccino popsicle. Those are so cute. Yours are a different shape. And mine, those look like they would fit in your mouth better. Uh huh. Oh uh, my God. I love yeah. those. those are adorable. You know, when I make it in the blender, we always get at least two servings out of it. So it's yeah. Because yeah. we have those big, uh, like traditional old fashioned milkshake glasses. And sometimes yes. what I do is like, um, with Rancho, we get like 16 servings out of them, but we're giving little tiny shots. Yeah. And, yeah. And, you know, like just barely a sip. But one of the things I do, because right now I'm teaching my ultimate reboot class, which is a weight loss class, is to further lower the caloric density is I'll add a little ice and it'll yes. just be a little bit more. It doesn't affect the flavor, but it yeah. makes it a little bit more voluminous and it makes it, uh, it extends it. And so that's another trick you can do. Yeah, it's that's a great one. Makes it colder and creamier too, you know? Yeah, I, d I did do that with, with my first practice batch and that was very good. So I'm just going to refill this. I have learned the hard way. I put this in a bread pan because otherwise it can tip over or slosh around in your freezer unless you have so much room in your freezer that you're not afraid of any leaning over or anything. So I, I did find this bread pan helpful with these Slightly flimsy, but very nonstick silicone popsicle molds. So again, there's six plus, you know, in this case, I only made two out of there. And then I'm going to put the rest. Oh, my freezer is filling up. Uh, put the rest in these one cup uh, containers. This one isn't quite a cup. So you can get a lot out of that single frappuccino recipe batch of yours. Yeah, I can even imagine a 16th of this recipe being satisfying because it is nice and thick. Or if you added a cup of ice or something, even more so. 
Okay, so I'm going to put these in the freezer. I'll have those. I'm going to be living high off the hog for the next few weeks. So. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm going to just uh, wash my food processor. I'll be just a second. So guys, if you're just joining us, we have a sale. Well, I don't have a sale on process is on sale on Amazon today. If you send your receipt to chef AJ bonus at yahoo.com or a screenshot of your receipt, even if you bought it a long time ago, we will send you a PDF of some delicious dessert recipes that didn't make it in the book, like the strawberry chocolate cheesecake with an almost two hour recording of how to make it back to Linda. Great. Thank you. So now we're going to end with mini cheesecakes and you can Make these either in a mini muffin pan or a standard muffin pan. I don't think it'll make 24 of these, but it makes six to 10 larger cheesecakes, you know, if you're making it for a dessert for friends, families, or if you just want something you can grab every now and then it'll make 12 to 15, 12 to 18 minis, um, depending how much fruit you use and how thick your crusts are and things. So that's why there's a variable in terms of how many it makes. So our base, let me just move everything here. Our base is cashews, which adds that um, creamy cheesecake like texture. So I soaked my cashews. We'll be making the filling in a minute. First, we're gonna make the little crust. So we're gonna start with some almonds. And again, I like to um, sort of jump start the processing with using by using chopped or sliced or slivered almonds. And so here's my blade. There's our three quarters cup of almonds I used sliced this time. And then we have Medjool dates again, I used four for about a half cup. And I cut each of them into three or four pieces. And then uh, dry and sweetened shredded coconut, two tablespoons. I love the taste that a little bit of coconut gives to crusts. Yeah, I do. And I like it as a topping too. And they also have, I don't know if you know, uh, reduced fat coconut. Ah, no, I did not know that. Because if you're just doing it to look pretty, you know, not necessarily for a flavor. And, you know, I, I generally use the Deglet Nor dates because they're cheaper. Uh, yeah. but, for, but for the Frappuccino, I always do. I splurge on the Medul. Medul. Um, yeah. We have a store. I don't know if you have one where you live called Winco. I love Winco. That's yeah. what the baked tortilla chips. And oh my gosh, it's like, it's so inexpensive. Like the same. Yeah, the bulk section. I mean, sometimes the cashews are under the, the medjool dates, I mean, are under $5 a pound. Same with cashews, actually. Yeah. So I love Winco. I, I was introduced to it when I used to live in India, and luckily they have another one here up in Roseau. Oh, good, yeah. It's yeah. an incredible store. Hey, you know, Mona says that she actually uses the pulp from the soy milk, and she puts it back into recipes like that she's doing in the Ninja Creamy. Oh, so using it for, for nice cream. Nice. Okay, I am going to process this. It, this will not take very long. processing today. Yeah, just to clarify, the recipes you get when you send a screenshot of your receipt are not in the book because other if they were in the book, then it's not a bonus. It's a video course. I taught in desserts that didn't make it in the book, like, for example, the decadent chocolate mousse, the strawberry chocolate cheesecake. So even if you bought the book a long time ago, just get a screenshot of your receipt. You should be able to access that even in your history. 
And if you really can't find it, if you take a picture of yourself holding the book, then we will accept that as well to Chef AJ Bonus at yahoo.com. It is on sale today. If you already have it, it's a great gift for somebody else. I don't know if you guys know, it's my first book with photos and the photos are really good. Amazing by Hannah Kaminsky, who's doing the photos for my next book, which comes out in one year. All right. Yes, I'm going to us have some recipes appear in the vegan journal i don't know if you know the no what is the vegan journal a magazine yeah it is from the vegetarian resource group i've had three times i've had um you know a set of six recipes featured in their magazine and hannah is now the new editor there so so who does that because it's not the same as this book uh, not book magazine it's not this one, is it? Because I've got recipes this month in this one. I don't think it. that's it. No. It, this, is that called, it, no this is called American Vegan. Yeah, I think no, it's, it's called the Vegan Journal. It used to be called the Vegetarian Journal. And who's who's the publisher or the... The, the Vegetarian Resource Group mm -hmm. out of Maryland. And they have been in existence a couple decades. They're the they do the Harris poll about how many vegans there are in the country. I'm just, uh, I'm spooning in some crust. But in who's your contact person? I'm curious if I know them. That's all. Well, um, Hannah is the recipe editor now, so you could ask her about it. Deborah Wasserman. I have heard of her. Yes, I and, think And um, Charlie, is it Charlie Stahl? S-T-A-H-L? They are the co-founders, editors, all things. They, yeah, they have, um, you know, so they have nutritional articles. They review cookbooks. They talk about, uh, you know, animal welfare issues. They have internships for young vegans. And they have scholarship contests. Um, they review restaurants. It's a great organization. I, I wonder if you've I heard of them. I, I've definitely heard of them, but I mean, I talk to Hannah all the time. She never told me that she was doing something like that. That sounds fantastic. I just found out like a month ago. So is this something that um, like you have to pay for to get the magazine or is well, it a um, How does it work? They are a nonprofit. And you get the magazine from your donation, you know, by, by virtue of donating. So if there is some kind of minimum donation you need to make to get it, but um, they're, they're very generous, you know, they're clearly very mission driven. Um, so check online. I've been, I've been helping them and being part of what they do for quite a while. Oops. Now, what do you do for Dr. Greger as a volunteer? Uh, what I do, I, uh, I started out, I, I heard him talk at the 2015 Vegetarian Summerfest and their, their um, website was covered with, please volunteer. So I've started out by writing some of those summaries. Where was, it, I, was I there in 2015? You were, yes. My roommate was so excited to. Nice. I hope I was. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, that was, that was, that was. Gregor, Dr. Colin T. Campbell, you know, the, and then, um, so I started by writing those, then I started editing those of others, then now I review team, so before the videos go out, there's a team of us who review them to make sure every possible mistake has been found. So that they're so that they're as perfect as they can be before they go out to the public. So, you know, you have to have all the the journal articles. They give them to you in the PDF form, all the ones that he cites, and you check the charts and the citations and the math and the diagrams. And so just to make sure they're as good as they can be. So I'm on the video review team, but there are translators, you know, there are 
people who work with images, they're just lots of the, just the production of the videos has to be huge. So very exciting, but whatever I review, I learn a lot about because it's very intense. Let's now make the filling for the cheesecake. I, so I, what I got out of this was 12 minis and five regular sizes. And then now I am going to make the filling. I often use my smoothie blender for small amounts that my Vitamix sometimes doesn't like to handle. Sometimes it takes a little longer because it's not as powerful as the Vitamix, but there's nothing worse than putting all your ingredients into the Vitamix and then it doesn't work because there's not enough substance in there because it likes a lot of substance to twirl around. So I do this in my small blender, my Nutribullet. So here are my soaked cashews. I especially like to soak my cashews if I'm using my small blender. And then we go for three tablespoons maple syrup. And then the, the really great flavor here is the lemon flavor which you get, which I like to get from, in this case, in many desserts, the lemon zest, the zest of one pretty large lemon and the juice of that lemon. So zest and juice of one lemon. So we did the cashews, maple syrup, zest and juice of a lemon, and that's it. And so there's not much, uh, too much liquid in there. So Again, I'm going to run this. Run this. It might take a little while. I may have to wipe it down once. And I will be right back. I feel like we're like a, like a sports reporter. And back to Linda. Hi. But I'll tell you guys who's on the show tomorrow. The show is a little bit earlier tomorrow. It's at 9 a.m. Pacific time. because I'm teaching for Dr. McDougall. If you need a great program, it's fantastic. Luckily, since the pandemic, I've been able to be a culinary instructor who doesn't have to fly me to Santa Rosa. And it's been fabulous. I'm making 11 recipes, actually many of them from unprocessed. And the next McDougal program is in October. But tomorrow's guest at 9 a.m. Pacific time is Dr. Ashley Gerhardt. So if you're familiar with the Yale food addiction scale, she had something to do with that. I don't know if she made it up herself or with the other doctors, but she's going to be talking about the evidence that uh, processed food addiction is real because a lot of people think it's not, but they are not the ones that are suffering from it. One more, one more, one more time. One more. One more time. Keep one more time. You're doing great. Well, what I'll tell you about is I find it really interesting what Linda's doing about portioning desserts because until the puerto where I just came back from. And by the way, we have three openings for August. It's not too late to join. And then of course there's next year. We had a terrific time. There was 35 of us vegans in one group. It was amazing. The desserts at Ran Rancho, I'm not kidding. They're this size. This might even be too big. It's like, this is probably bigger than it. It's the size of a postage stamp. And it's like, I don't know, like one or two bites, but I guess in the real world, uh, that's not, I haven't been to Europe, but that desserts are not served big. They're just supposed to be a little something after. Let me show you what's in this box. This was a gift from Vicki Gack Brett, a regular on the show. And these are the coolest things. I don't know if you can see this, but this is an earring of my book, Unprocessed. It's the cover of my book. It's uh, Linda, when your book comes out, I'll have to get you a pair, but I have to, I have to have a key. I have to have a PDF of the front page. Let me see. Okay. I, oh, that I thought so this was the awesome. most, most thoughtful and creative gift ever. And oh on sale today, and you get bonuses. Yeah. Isn't that cool? I, I don't know why I didn't show that. I should probably wear them at some point, but they're so cool. I like to look at them every day. I was just saying this is about the size of maybe of a dessert at Rancho, maybe four bites. Ah. The, the idea of of, you know, smaller desserts, but yeah. again, not everybody can have just four bites and maybe then dessert's not right for them. But I find like, as long as it's not too high in fat, I don't have a problem, eat, you know, moderating desserts. It's when it's like 
peanut butter and chocolate. That's a little different than when it's, <laughs> that, you know, when it's oat and banana, I don't have a problem, you know, that goes right. Goes. Yeah. I, and they, I find, you know, everybody has to find the foods that fill them up. I'm putting a few berries first on each crust, yeah. you know, yeah. different things fill different people up. I find that from my, the one-on-one students that I coach, um, you know, for some people, oats, oatmeal is really filling for others. They're hungry at 930 in the morning after their oatmeal breakfast, you know, so you just have to kind of find the things that fill you up and have those. And uh, I do find that when you have desserts in these small portions, yeah, you are more likely to just say, okay, I'm done. I'm good. So then you, so we're we're hiding some berries in the bottom and then we're going to put some berries on top as well. So we want to. That's clever. Yeah. You want to sort of some stealth in there and those berries are so good for calming inflation and also for calming sugar spikes and in your blood. So. We're coming on, there's a blueberry stand near here. I'm gonna go, gonna go, gonna go. Fresh blueberries, I like it to have a refrigerator. What's full. your What's your favorite fruit? My favorite fruit, I, I love a good, I eat a basic, truly an apple every day. I love, recently I like the cosmic, I think that's what I just bought for my rice pudding I'm making tomorrow with a cos. They call them cosmic crisp, right? Yes, I, I I really like those. I used to like jazz, but I I can't find them as often now. Have you ever had the envy apple? That's my favorite apple. The envy apple, yes, it's my favorite. They were out of those, but my favorite fruit is strawberries. I just go crazy. Oh yeah, I love strawberries when you can get fresh. Oh my gosh. I just, I'm just, we had a very short season this year. I, I got this amazing batch and loved everyone. I went back a week later and we had had rain and got a bunch of soggy berries after that. There's, they're just so delicate, you know? Yeah. All right. So let's do these larger ones. Here. I hope my. my uh, filling last it's not a ton of filling but I did get more than 12 I could have started a second mini muffin pan and just made the mini because it doesn't always completely the crust and the filling don't always completely match then mm. you have to eat a few extra crusts oh <laughs> Is there a substitute for the cashews in the vegan berry cheesecake, asked Stephanie. Can she have macadamias? I'm wondering. I think macadamias would work well. I'd worry a little about almonds just because they, they're so much harder to blend than cashews. And then the final touch is I, I, I did have too much. Uh, I had more crust than I had filling. You could sprinkle, maybe you could sprinkle the crust on top. Yeah, use it as a kind of a crumble. Yeah, I could use these. You could, you could put more berries on top, or we could use the crust as a crumble on top. Most beautiful food style in here, but you get the. It's idea. so white. It's amazing to me how white it is. It, uh, the uh, it whiter on the screen but it's um it is it is white cashews really do turn quite white when you blend them oh honey would like also, to, oh, honey would like to know if the vegan journal you recommend you were talking about is that a paper thing or is it a virtual thing it it's paper primarily they do Several months after the issue comes out, they post it for free on their website. I think it's VRG. So you can look at it. You can look at past issues anytime. 
on their website, but it does come as a paper magazine. Yeah, so I'm doing six recipes on ancient grains. I think it's for their January issue. Nice. I'm going to go look them up. And if you want, we can add that to the show notes. I mean, just give me the link, you know? Yeah. Okay. I will send that. I also recently have been developing a chocolate cupcake recipe and I contact page on my website, graciousvegan.com. If you go to the contact page, form. I have a place where we can get that chocolate cupcake with chocolate frosting. Ooh. And I'm it, it uses date syrup in the frosting, which really works well. Nice. Okay. I'm on your website right now. Oh, I just saw the cover for your book. It's beautiful. Ah, thank you. I never, oh, wow. Delicious whole food recipes to reduce inflammation and promote health. I love it. Yeah. Get notification of clarification. And you're wearing the same apron. I love that on your thing. My sister made it for me. Where do you get the cupcake recipe in case people are asking? I'm on your website right now. Go to the contact page and contact me. Wow. Well, scroll down below. I the- see it. I see it. Um, I, I, then I'm going to add this to the thing to get the, the Great. Right. Thank so, you. Perfect. It and says subject. Do we just say cupcake recipe in it? Cup- or oh, oh, it's not going to a link. Oh, I'll have to look at it. Just says, oh, oh, wait, wait, no, maybe it is looking for my. Co- oh, look at that! You just sign up for your with your email. Sure. Yeah, yeah, it's below the contact form. Nice, got it. Yeah, I, I'm gonna add this to the show notes. Okay, so. great. All right, I just want to put it on the contact page. Beautiful. Okay. All right. Da- so let me switch my camera and again we just put this into the freezer these need a time to freeze couple hours to freeze and then ideally you let them sit on the counter for a little while before you eat them to soften them up a little or you can just give them a little zap in the microwave um and you can just pop one into your mouth Mm. so yeah so we got 12 minis and two standards, which is nice here. Excellent. So, yeah, and then I have a an array of fall classes for Portland Community College and Mount Hood Community College, but they're on Zoom, so anyone can all harvest apples, pears, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, lots of different classes on those, and then plant-based protein, meal planning are two other classes, so I'd love to see see people in those classes that would be great so they're all on zoom nothing in person correct yeah nice yeah we have fun and there you can do i make the recipe handouts to be cook along so you can prep and be ready and take the class from your kitchen if you want and we help people troubleshoot if they're having issues with making a recipe well that sounds like a lot of fun well, thank you. This was a wonderful presentation as usual. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Great to see you. Anytime. And uh, congratulations on the new book, guys. Get on the mailing list so you'll be notified when her book comes out. Yep. Content. Yep. Well, enjoy all your delicious desserts. Thank you. I will. I wish I could share them. I know, but they they look amazing. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back at 9 a.m. tomorrow when my guest is Dr. Ashley Gerhardt, and she's going to be talking about food addiction. Does it really exist? Well, she says there's evidence for a processed uh, food disorder or substance disorder. We'll find out the truth tomorrow.